everyone, welcome back to Sweet Yellow House. It's time for our Monday craft, but before we get started, let me remind you to support your local small businesses. So today's project is a sign that I purchased from the Goodwill, and I got a couple of these. So um, I just decided that I wanted to make a sign for um, a business here. So I'm going to start off by removing um, some of the elements that are attached to this, like the finials and the rope that's on here it's like a little i don't know tassel type uh, rope there so i just used my staple remover and a pair of pliers and i got that taken off i grabbed my diy paint in cake batter and i'm going going to put this in a separate cup and i'm going to add some water to this just to thin it out slightly um and i'm going to start off with a base coat on um, the sign here as you can see as i'm painting here that the background color is kind of showing through there um, so i'm going to have to do a couple of coats on this Once I have the initial uh, base coat on there, I'm gonna grab my heat gun and I'm going to use that to dry the paint faster um, so that way I can move on to my next step. I grab a piece of spare foam that I got from packaging from something else. I'm gonna put the finials in there. I'm gonna then use that to hold the finials up and I grab some little black dress and I'm gonna put a coat of little black dress on the finials and also on the top of the sign. Once I start painting the top of the sign, I realize that I want a little bit of a thicker border here. So I'm just grabbing my painter's tape and I'm gonna mark off a section here and run the painter's tape across the two measured out sections to get a even um, space marked off here. So what I'm gonna do is then use that tape and start painting a um, that section off once I have that all uh, sectioned off and painted I'm gonna go in with uh, the cake batter DIY paint and I'm gonna start my second coat on that what I'm looking for here is full coverage so I think by the time it's all said and done I do three coats on there just to make sure that um, that initial uh, design is covered all the way through once i get that last coat put on there i do grab my heat gun ag again just to finish up drying all of that paint so i can move on to my next step which is grabbing my trimming three iod mold so that i could put a border on the top of the um, sign I wanted to show you one of the things that I kind of made up for myself and it's this sheet here so if you are filming videos and you have a problem like I do kind of keeping track of the products that you use or names of things that you use I use this sheet to kind of keep track of all of that I write everything down as I'm moving through my my um my craft so that that way um when i go to edit my videos everything is there on the sheet i have all the information there so i don't have to be running back and forth um trying to figure out what i used or the name of a paint or something like that so that's a good tip if you um also video um or even just to keep track of your crafting something that way if you have to leave it halfway through and you don't remember exactly which paint you used or if you added uh, baking soda to paint or anything like that um, you can look back at your notes and kind of pick up where you left off so 
I glue this down with my tight bond and I kind of put that into place. I want to make sure that the borders on either side end at the same place and I um, just scrape that off with my scraper there and I'm going to let that clay and the glue set up for a couple of hours but not dry completely. Um, so before that dries completely I grab the DIY little black dress again and I'm going over the mold border that I made and the reason why I'm not letting it dry completely because it does help with cracking and kind of splitting um, if you paint over it before it's completely dry. I don't know the science behind it, I just know that it works um, and it keeps me from having to go back and completely fill in um, those cracks. So when I have that done, I'm letting that dry, but I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna grab a couple of different molds, the Olive Crest, the Anchithus, and also the Rosette mold. And I'm gonna use these three molds uh, to find a design or make a design that I'm happy with. So at this point, what I'm doing is I'm just making um, many different molds to kind of put them all together into a design that um, I can be uh, satisfied with. At this point, I realized that I'm pretty happy with this. So now I'm just gonna make my way around the sign um, making elements from these molds to go completely around the outer edge of this. While I have a few moments, I just wanted to let you know that every uh, last Wednesday of the month, I will be answering all the questions that I receive for the whole month. Um, so if you have any questions there, whether it be personal questions or things about the house or crafts or techniques um, just leave them in the um, the comments area and I I just gather all of those and keep them all organized and written down and then the last Wednesday of the month I will be making a vlog video just answering or demonstrating um, the answers to any of those questions that you have. So once I get those completely uh, all made to cover the border of my sign, I'm gonna go ahead and glue those down using my tight bond, making sure that I have enough glue there that when I push them down, I do have some of that glue coming out. I wanna make sure that I don't have a bunch of gaps in everything uh, once those dry up. So. Um, I do grab a little uh, paintbrush and I kind of, any glue that is kind of smushed out from there, I use the paintbrush and I kind of use that to uh, smooth that out and make sure that it's covering all of the edges around those molds. I just wanted to take the opportunity to remind you all about shopping local and supporting your local small businesses. A lot of times it's really hard for us to um, get the word out about who we are um, and what we do. And so we uh, rely on the support of our local consumers to kind of um, help us and to uh, push our businesses along. And it just encourages us to keep doing what we're doing and so anything that you can do to just give that support even if it's just to say a kind word and a comment it goes a long way believe me so I grabbed the cake batter paint and I actually uh, water that down a little bit and I go over those molds and once I go over the molds, just making sure they're uh, full of color, I'm gonna add some baking soda to that same paint. Um, and I mix it pretty thick, and I'm gonna grab a small paintbrush, and I'm gonna use that paintbrush just to go around 
um, the borders of those molds where they are laying against the sign just to fill in any kind of cracks and make sure that that texture is going all the way through. I'm not adding a bunch of that to the top of the molds because I don't want to lose any of that detail that's there. Once I get all of the uh, borders uh, of those molds covered, I then grab a bigger paintbrush and I'm going over the center part of the sign in an X type of motion. And I'm making sure that I'm adding a lot of texture, a lot of layers. I want this sign to look more like a plaster, a stucco type um, of texture. And once I get that where I like it, I'm gonna let that dry. I go in and I grab my IOD Chateau inlay uh, paint sheets and I'm gonna cut off the border so that I can uh, meet that uh, design together and it all lines up really well. And once I have it and I make sure that it lines up, I'm then going to add some water to that same paint. This is the same cup of paint that I've been using from the beginning. Um, and I water that down quite a bit and I'm going to use that to kind of um, go over one side of that sign at this point and I'm, I'm not being very careful. I'm just making sure that I'm putting that paint on there kind of um, loosely and also um, a lot of it so that I, I get good uh, adhesion there and then after I get the paint applied, I'm then going to apply my inlay sheet. Just to remind you that this is supposed to look very rustic, so you're not going for perfection here. Well, I'm not going for, for perfection here. If that's what you're going for, then um, you might want to be a little more careful than what I'm doing here. But once I get that inlay sheet down, I'm then um, misting it uh, pretty heavily, and I'm using a damp paper towel to push that inlay down onto the sign. I want to make sure that I'm misting it especially heavy over where the molds are so I can get a good contact from the inlay on top of the molds. I then proceed to do the same um, procedure to the other side of the sign. Misting is um, probably one of the most important tips that I can tell you here, um, especially if you're not uh, applying that to a flat surface, if you have molds uh, here like I'm doing, because it just kind of helps uh, put that, uh, wrap that paper around the molds. It gives it kind of like that, a little bit of stretch that you need to make sure that you can push it down around the molds. So once I get that where I want it, I let it dry overnight. And this is me going back in the next day when it's dry and remisting to pull that inlay paper off. If you find that you're having resistance to that, um, mist it a little more and then uh, go ahead and proceed to pull that away. Once I have that all pulled off, the next product that I'm going to grab is the gold uh, gilding wax. And I'm going to use this to go around all of the molds. And the reason that I'm doing this now is because I want this to be underneath the antiquing that I'm going to then apply because I don't want um, it to look new on top. So. Once I have that applied, I grab my heat gun and I'm kind of trying to just force some more cracks and texture with the heat gun and um, to dry that up. And then once I have that done, I realize that I would like to kind of highlight the top of that sign where I added those molds. And so I just use my finger and I start to apply um, some of that gilding wax to the top there.
once I have that set up, I grab my big top and um, some water and I mix that 50-50 and I spray over the whole sign, the top uh, as well, where the, uh, the black paint and the, um, the molds are. I just spray over everything to give it a um, protection coat. The reason that I'm spraying this and I am not wiping or using a brush to paint over it is because I don't want to run the risk of smearing that inlay um, paint there. Once I have that all sprayed where I want, I then let that dry. And then after that's dry, I go in and I um, do a clear uh, wax coat on here and the reason that I'm putting this down is so that when I go in with my antiquing wax it doesn't completely just um, absorb into that I, I can get a little more movement out of it um, when I go to uh, wipe on or wipe off so I grab my uh, combination of clear white and antiquing wax that I mix all together. And, and you've seen me do this before. If you've seen some of my other videos, I just mix this all together so um, I can kind of thin that antiquing wax out. And I start to make my way around the um, border of the sign. The reason why um, I do this is mainly because this is really where a lot of your antiquing and kind of the, you know, the aging comes in um, because most of the time that's, you know, when you have dirt and aging and dust and everything, it sticks to any kind of, um, any kind of uh, element that it has uh, a rise of 3D, so it's gonna stick in all those crevices. So that's mainly why I just go around the outer portion of that, and then I feather into the center. So once I have that where I think I want it, I'm just grabbing a little more of that clear, uh, clear wax, and I'm just thinning out some of that antiquing wax around the center just where I think I've gotten a little heavy handed. I'm just using that clear wax to kind of thin that out. Next, I'm grabbing my DIY dark wax, and this is more of a pasty wax. It's a lot thicker than the one that I used before, and a really soft brush. And I'm just going around the outer parts of just the molds, and then I'm feathering that out so that that way there's no harsh line um, going out from there, and it looks very natural. Once I'm happy with that, I go ahead and let that wax set up overnight so everything's nice and dry. I grab my IOD typesetting stamp set and now I'm going to press some numbers and um, a street address in here so that it looks like an old sign off of an old building. I'm using my IOD black ink uh, with an IOD ink pad and I just uh, sanded those uh, stamps so that they can have some good tooth. You only have to do this the first time of using your stamp. And then I just uh, map out what I like and I stamp that into place. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed my video. Thank you so much for sticking with me and spending your time with me. I really do appreciate it. Um, we've had a rough week, a couple of weeks with the flooding and stuff is why I didn't put out a video last Monday. Um, but we are back on track and in for some better weather. So we're looking forward to kind of um, just keep going. So we will see you uh, next time.